My name is Josh Wagner and I'm in my comfort zone. I'm sitting at the corner of a bar and I like to travel around the country and learn who is raising the bar. For me, I like to talk to great mixologists, visit great venues. I know a thing or two that happens back there, but I know I can always learn something new. So follow me as I learn who's raising the bar. at the W with Robert Ferrara, who is the head bartender here at the Dutch at the W in Miami Beach. And first, wonderful to be here. Thank you. Sitting, in, sitting in the corner of your bar makes me a comfortable man because I know I'm gonna experience some great stuff right now. So before we get into all of this that's happening here, because I'm not sure if this is something I want to beat like a drum or let's just pull that open and see what comes <laughs> out. But uh, it's a lot of really exciting things happening in Miami right now on the cocktail culture scene. Absolutely. What, what, what have you seen recently? What, what, what's, what's happening? I know when I'm off, I always love to go out and get a good cocktail. And for a while here, I really couldn't do it. Yeah. It's not like other cities where you can go out and just always let's get a good cocktail. Mm. But now that's starting to happen, which is great. Mm. I think everybody in Miami deserves it too. Yeah, we definitely do deserve it. Yeah. I mean, for, for you, what is exciting you on the cocktail front? So now you just said there's great spots to get good drinks. And what are people doing that, that, is, that is off kilter, you know? Off kilter? Uh, besides the barrel age program? We're gonna get into this because this is definitely something that I wanna learn more about. I wouldn't say anything's off kilter per se. Mm -hmm. I would say more people are actually going back to the basics, which is good, because there was a, a long time there where you go out in Miami and the only thing you get is a crappy mojito, mm -hmm. which is horrible. You're in Miami, it should be the best mojito you ever had in your life. Yeah. Um, but people are actually going back to basics, learn how to make Manhattans, Negronis, old fashions, mm -hmm. uh, old classics that none of us even heard of. It's left up from like the early 1900s, which is cool. Like barrel age number four is a uh, reason of a Pisco, yeah. Man and Napoleon, a Blanco Vermouth, and um, Jerry Thomas Decanter Bitters. I Four months, we put it in these beautiful bottles. We don't have to name it, hence number four. Nice. It's handwritten with a piece of masking tape, that's it. So Robert Ferrara at the Dutch, barrel age cocktail number four. I'm thirsty. What's that? Can you walk me through it? Absolutely. Now, I know this is kind of a difficult process because mixologists really pride themselves on presentation, technique, but the technique is the time you spent to put this in the barrel yeah. and the spirit that's coming, right? So I'm not really, this isn't much hard work for you right now, right? It's always hard work. It's always hard no, work. I was kidding. Yeah, oh, waiting for three yeah. months, two months to get this out of the well, barrel was well, yeah, hard work. I mean, right? the, whole, the whole waiting thing is, is sometimes just as hard and stressful as actually working Saturday night when you're three deep. Because, but isn't that when the job's the best, man? No, absolutely. Okay. But the results at the end of the night, when you count your tips, got a girl's phone number, mm. you wait two months, you get this great product. Yeah. It's the finished results that are awesome. Now, why are you stirring, not shaking? It's a spirit forward cocktail. Uh, spirit forward cocktails, from what I was always taught, should never be shaken, always stirred. You only want to shake if you're adding a, a juice, okay. some kind of citrus acid. Mm -hmm. you, don't, you don't want to bruise the spirit, you just want to get it all nice. And all the flavors are there. I'm just like, I'm just bringing it down to temperature per se. Okay. So, the way we serve it here at the Dutch, just, just chill it a little bit. Serve it over one big ice cube. So, this is a barrel age number four. It's almost a barrel age number four. Almost a barrel age number four. I'm sorry, I'm tempted, man. I'm, I'm sitting here, I'm getting thirsty. A little zest. A little orange zest to make the, the Mandarin Napoleon inside pop. There you go. So this is a very special thing because there's only gonna be one barrel number four. Correct. And I'm putting my dent in it right now. You are. So whoever comes next, if there's no more four, they hopefully get to have some five. Absolutely, cheers. Barrel aged cocktail number four. Correct. That's got layers for days. That, that mandarin pops, the understated notes of some of the pisco, that celery bitters, that, uh, that I could drink for a long, long time. But unfortunately, man, I don't have any barrels in my house and I don't have your expertise. I don't know how to do these things. So walk me through, walk me through something that I could do at home, something that I can do Absolutely. that is simple, something that I don't have to be a, a scientist to, to acquire. Scientist. Yeah. I'm going right. to do a twist on the classic cocktail of them all. Okay. A martini. So I'm going to use a Dolan Blanc Vermouth. So you were saying before, minimum ingredients, three, four, it's all you need, right? This cocktail's gonna have three ingredients. Three ingredients. Four, actually, if you wanna count the water. Okay. So 
So we did three quarters of an ounce of Dolan Blanc. Okay. Using a, a full ounce of Mandarin Napoleon. Traditional gin martinis, you would put some orange bitters in there also. Okay. But hence why this. Beautiful. Won't need that with this, right? Absolutely not. Because it's already got it on its own. So. And since I'm wearing a tie and we have a cute little glass, <laughs> we're going to go with gin. Thanks. So the Mandarin is going to be able to actually influence the gin. I mean, obviously, gin, depending on which one you use, is pronouncing different yeah. botanicals. We're using a, an American style gin. Spring 44. Correct. Clean. Very clean. So there you go. I mean, it's very simple to do this at home. We do this a lot here, and you do it for your friends. Yeah. And this is for someone who's also not comfortable to go get fresh produce and do crazy things. Absolutely. Like you need three spirits, it's measurements, that's what it is. Yeah. You've got three quarters. Yep. Ounce. Yep. Ounce. Ounce and a half. Ounce and a half. Yeah. So we got a little bit of a boozy cocktail right here. Of course. But that's what a martini is supposed to be. But stirring it also brings down, I'm controlling the dilution. Okay. So like I'm controlling how much water is going to be in it. Because every cocktail, you can't just have this in a glass. I mean, you and I could. Yeah, we could. Um, <laughs> The average consumer probably needs a little bit of water out to it. Yeah. Plus, the water makes everything pop. It's all the different layers of flavor. Absolutely. All right, so this is simple. Correct. Three ingredients. Take it home. I can do that. It's good stuff. Perfect. I'm just going to give you a little bit of a lemon twist. Great. If you put olives in this, it would be very weird. It would be weird, right? Correct. That brine. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Napoleon Martini. Napoleon Martini, simple, sweet, easy to make, easy to do at home, easy to make with your friends, and looks like it's going to also be easy to drink, right? Yes. Yeah, I'd like to serve that to a bunch of my friends. They wouldn't be upset with me. That's really <laughs> good. Mm. Now, I do know one thing, though. If I do sit at the corner of a bar and I do get to uh, have the privilege to sit with a bartender, I know. After some time, you got one thing that's truly going to come your way. This is a shot. Yeah. Just, just, just a shot. Straight to it. But when you say that ten times a night, just a shot, it turns into uh, just a couple shots. Then, then you say cap. <laughs> then you say cap. Well, the simplest way to drink Mandarin Napoleon is uh, just like this. That's it. And a privilege to sit with you, seeing you raising the bar. Cheers. Right? Thank you. Welcome. Well done. Thank you for the complex and the simple. Appreciate Salud. it. Cheers. 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 Check out his barrel aged cocktails, you gotta come here yourself. But if you wanna make something at home, we just learned to make something simple, easy, it'll make you happy. We'll see you next time when we come and see uh, Raising the Bar. Mm -hmm.